different entrepreneurs have different yield expectations or rate of return expectations from their investments. Some entrepreneurs are conservative. They want safe and solid investments. But then again, the returns that they would get would be small. Other entrepreneurs would want their returns to be just about the lending rates of banks. And so if the lending rates are 10%, they might want 15 up to 20%. But still, other entrepreneurs are risk takers. They are bolder in their investments. They might be expecting yields going up to 30%. Thus, these different entrepreneurs would have different future value expectations of their investments today. They'll be using different compound factors. On the other hand, they'll also be using different discount factors to convert future values into present values. More sophisticated investors would expect an investment yield that would at least equal or even exceed their weighted average cost of capital or WAC. The WAC is the combined cost of long-term debt and the cost of stockholders' equity, computed on the basis of the respective share of the total capital valued at their market prices. If there were preferred shares, this would be included in the computation of the WAC. Here is an example. XYZ Enterprise has a market capitalization of 20 million pesos, broken down into 8 million pesos long-term debt and 12 million pesos stockholders' equity. The market capitalization of stockholders' equity is derived by multiplying the number of equity shares by the market price per share. Assume that the cost of debt after taxes is 10% and the cost of equity is 20% also after taxes. Let's now compute for the WAC. The debt is at 8 million. The proportion of debt to the total capitalization is 40%. Multiply that by the cost of capital of 10%, and we get a WAC of 0 0.04. Let's get to the equity of 12 million pesos. Its proportion is 60%. Multiply that by cost of capital of 0 0.20 to get a WAC of 0.12. Let's add 0 0.04 from the debt to 0.12 of the equity to get an overall WAC of 0.16. Thus, the WAC of XYZ Enterprise is 16% after taxes. The cost of debt is the effective interest rate on long-term debt. The cost of equity is one of the most difficult topics in finance. There are, in fact, various approaches used by financial analysts in computing the cost of equity. The computational aspect of investing is the easy part. The more difficult part is determining the exact additional cash outlays or inflows from the investment. The key words there are additional and cash. For the entrepreneur doing investment analysis, all past investments would be considered sunk cost or highly irrelevant cost. Only future cash outlays and inflows are relevant. Thus, if a project were to use equipment bought in the past, 
the cost of that equipment is irrelevant. However, if we will sell the old equipment, the cash that we will get from the old equipment would have to be deducted from the cash outlay that we will put out for the new equipment. Another thing, all the cash outlays that would be incurred anyway, whether the project is undertaken or not, are also irrelevant. So therefore, if I were renting the office space and the new project would actually use the same office space, then the cost of the rental would be irrelevant. The capital investment analyst must figure out one, the incremental cash investment outlays or outflows attributable to the new project. Two, the incremental cash revenues or savings from the project. Three, the incremental cash operating expenses for the project. And four, the terminal cash values at the end of the project's life. Terminal cash values include the cash sales of fixed assets at the end of a project's life. Some fixed assets, like land, may even appreciate. Others, like machinery and equipment, will probably have a very little cash value at the end of the project life. The investment in working capital, which includes accounts receivable and inventory, will also not be needed anymore at the end of the project. Therefore, they can be converted to cash at the end of the project's life. At this point, it is important to remember that when we do project investment analysis, we must compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Thus, if the investment yield expectation or rate of return expectation, otherwise called the investment hurdle rate, is on a before-tax basis, then our net cash inflows must also be on a before-tax basis. If the investment hurdle rate were on an after-tax basis, then the net cash inflows must be on an after-tax basis. Finally, we must ensure that all financing flows are excluded from the project. They are extrinsic or external to the viability of the project itself. We're trying to look at the investment intrinsic rate of return or the internal rate of return and should exclude all external financing. Partly the reason for this is that loan terms can vary from project to project and from time to time. And therefore, they might confuse the analysts from coming up with a real rate of return. Also, another reason for removing financing flows is that we are already using the weighted average cost of capital in discounting future values into the present values. Therefore, if we still add the financing flows, we will be double counting. There is the cost of financing from the WAC, and then there are the financing outflows from the payment of loans in terms of principals and in terms of interest rates. The life of a project or the length of time we will use to evaluate a capital investment can be set at the economic or useful life of the major capital assets or investments. If the project calls for a major overhauling or a major replacement of spare parts, the analyst should include this cash outlays during the project's life. At certain times, the analyst may opt to use an arbitrary investment time period or project life of 5, 
seven or 10 years. For infrastructure projects, high rise buildings and tree planting programs, the analyst may go up to 20 or even 40 years. If short time periods are chosen, the analyst must remember that many of the capital assets may still have high resale values. This should be taken into account as part of the terminal cash values at the end of the project. Once all the relevant cash flows have been determined, the capital investment analyst is ready to make the discounted cash flow computation and derive the net present value, NPV, and the internal rate of return, or IRR. To appreciate the investing concepts that we have so far discussed, let us take the following example. A new project is being evaluated. Capital expenditures like land, building, machinery equipment are expected to amount to 7 million pesos in year zero and 3 million pesos in year one for a total of 10 million pesos investment. Working capital, meaning investments in accounts receivable and in inventory, which includes raw materials, work in process, and finished goods, are calculated at 2 million in year two when the project is expected to start. A sales increase in years three and four, additional working capital investments amounting to 1 million pesos in year three and another 1 million pesos in year four are needed. Cash collections from sales are estimated at 12 million pesos for year two, 18 million pesos for year three, 24 million pesos for year four, and 30 million pesos each year from years five to 10. Cash outflows for cost of goods sold excluding depreciation expenses, which are non-cash, are forecasted at 8 million pesos for year two, 12 million pesos for year three, 16 million pesos for year four, and 20 million pesos for each year from years five to 10. Cash outflows from operating expenses, excluding non-operating expenses or interest rates, and loan principal payments, are placed at 2 million pesos for year two, 3 million pesos for year three, 4 million pesos for year four, and 5 million pesos for each year from years five to 10. Terminal cash values include the entire working capital of 4 million pesos on year 10, and the sale of 2 million pesos of the fixed asset in year 11. The cash inflows and outflows are summarized herein. The net present value, or NPV, is computed using a 20% discount rate. The resulting capital investment analysis will look like this. If we examine the schedule of cash inflows and outflows, we will have a net present value of 2 million 859,000 pesos at the end of the project life. This means that our return is actually higher than 20% since the NPV is greater than zero. To summarize, we've learned three things in this lecture. Number one, what is investing? Number two, We've learned the proper tools and techniques in capital investment analysis. And finally, number three, we've learned to determine what is a good capital investment project and what is a bad capital investment project.